Well, you're very welcome to Stonerside Farm. Uh, my name is Jerry Duffy and I'm the farm manager here at Stonerside. It's been part of the Godolphin organisation since 2008 when it was purchased from Robert and Janice McNair. It was a one-time DuPont family farm and the DuPont sold the farm to Arthur Hancock who developed it as part of his uh, stone farm uh, and Arthur sold it to the McNairs in the late 90s. So Robert and Janice McNair bought the property in 1998 and along with the help of John Adger and Bobby Spaulding they did a wonderful job developing the farm, adding to it um, and restoring it. Uh, it was a very successful operation for the McNairs. They bred Congaree here, um, one of the best milers in North America in probably the last couple of decades at least. Um, and even in the year that the McNairs sold the property to Sheikh Mohammed, uh, was the year in which Midshipman and Ravens Pass won the Breeders' Cup. So it's been a very successful property for Godolphin, um, obviously starting with those two horses. Um, and since then it's reared the likes of Talismanic, Frosted, Enticed, so it's been a very successful property for Godolphin. So Stonerside is home to a good number of the Godolphin USA brood mares. Um, we do everything really except stallions. Uh, right now we're in the middle of our breeding season, so we began foaling at the beginning of February. So hopefully we'll have all our foals on the ground by mid-May. And those foals will stay on their mothers until they're weaned later on in the fall and we'll rear them here right through to their yearling at the end of the yearly year when they're ready to be allocated to trainers. So we start bright and early here at Stonerside. The typical day begins anywhere from 5.45 to 6.15 depending on what we've got going on. Uh, the day begins by teasing the mares which we have a stallion pony and we present them to mares at different points of time um, and they basically tell us whether a mare is coming into heat or going out of heat and whether she'll be receptive to the stallion. So in addition to the vet work it just provides a useful tool for ensuring we cover the mares with the stallion at the optimum time. Um, our veterinarian usually arrives on site at about 7am each morning and he'll check each mare again to, to try and predict exactly when they need to be covered. Once they've been covered, we then check them for pregnancy at about 15 days. Um, so that's always an exciting time and you know, to get to see that, that there's an awful lot of work goes into you know, getting the, the feeding programs, we get mares under lights, you know, combination with the veterinary work. There's a huge amount of effort from all the team goes into getting this mare just ready for cover. So at 15 days when we see a, a pregnancy on the ultrasound scanner, that's a a, a joyous occasion to say the least. So once we get through with the vet work I like to go to our nursery barn and see the young foals and see them being turned out and um, what, what I'm looking at them for is you know confirmation, health, well-being, are they nursing the mares, are the mares enough milk, all your general sort of you know health and well-being to ensure they're doing okay. Um, sometimes we'll have a new foal so we'll go and I'll inspect the new foal and we'll weigh him and um, we then coordinate different mares going to the breeding sheds ensuring their paperwork is in order and so on, so there's plenty going on. So Stonerside is a very historic property. Uh, the Stoner Creek uh, runs right through the middle of the farm um, and the Stoner Creek is named after a man named James Stoner who I believe came in as early as Daniel Boone in the late 1700s uh, and himself along with the Kennedy family settled in the area. So the main house here on the farm dates back to 1790 and it was wonderfully restored by the McNairs when they bought the property. Um, we have two graveyards on the, on the farm that also date back to sort of the Civil War period. Uh, so there's a lot of history. So you'll see a number of features here on Stoner side, some of which are quite unique to the central Kentucky area and some are, which are specifically unique to Stoner side. I think our most notable um, landmark is our covered bridge. Uh, it was beautifully designed and built by Robert and Janice McNair and it's reportedly the first covered bridge built in central Kentucky uh, in 120 years. So another feature you'll see on Stoner side, which is quite unique to central Kentucky, are these freestanding chimney stacks. Uh, at one time there would have been a cabin built here. They could have been 150 or 200 years old. And of course the cabin was made from wood and clay and it's long since gone. 
but the only part of it that was made from stone is the chimney stack and it remains. So they make for some wonderful features. You can see we have a variety of types of barns. Um, the original stone farm has our typical you know, concrete built American style barn. We also have a number of tobacco barns. Um, tobacco barns are really wonderful for, for rearing horses. They were built with great height. Um, as you can see, they're vented along the sides um, to allow for great airflow, but they're just great airy barns. They remain cool in the summer and they don't get stuffy and they're just great barns for rearing and developing young horses. So as you can see from our tobacco barns, they're quite tall and at one time when tobacco farming was the biggest crop here in central Kentucky, the tobacco would have been harvested and it would have been hoisted up into the loft areas um, to dry and cure. Um, as such, the barns are slatted to allow for airflow through them. Some of them have couplers on top to draw even more air through. Uh, but the tobacco barns have made for great horse barns. Um, again, the, one of the most important things when you're designing and building and um, stabling for horses is airflow. And tobacco barns just provide um, you know, great natural airflow. So it's a wonderful haven for wildlife. We, uh, twice or three times a week, we'll be met with a number of deer crossing the road. As you can see, there's a, a large number of birds of prey. Uh, we reportedly have an eagle on the farm, which I have yet to see, but I look forward to seeing him. And there's even been rumour of a bobcat living down near the covered bridge, so they're quite an elusive character, I, I gather, so hopefully we'll get to see him one day.